to the top, it's been no fell our force, we learn that from the start, no matter what we go through, come together as people, we've done it all before, this be another sequel, from DC way back then, been doing a damn thing, tell it like I, yeah, we're back doing the same thing, many of us disasters, done left the country shook, we can't put it back together, come take another look. Haiti, take another look. Good evening and welcome to the Teledakai Show, where our motto is to promote, educate, and inform. I'm your host, Jimmy Jacques. My guest tonight is the chairman of the National Haitian American Elected Officials Network. My guest tonight is Joseph Macandal Champagne. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy Teledakai. We will be right back. See Mr. Joseph Macandal Champagne is the chairman of the National Haitian American Elected Officials Network. On November 2nd, 2010, Mr. Champagne became the first popularly elected mayor of African descent in Ocean County's history and the first Haitian American elected mayor in the state of New Jersey. Mr. Macandal Champagne is also the Nation of Islam's representative to IET. Let's please welcome Mr. Joseph Macandal Champagne to Télé Lacay. Mr. Joseph Macandal Champagne, welcome to Télé Lacay. It's a pleasure to have you. The pleasure is also mine. Thank you so much for having invited me and I look forward to uh, addressing your questions. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, man. It's, it's, it's really very good to having you because we've been trying to get you on our show for some time. We know the work, we've seen the work that you have done. Uh, but before we begin, uh, 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 Joseph, could you please tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Who is Joseph Macadal Champagne? Certainly, thank you so much for the question. It is a fundamental question that goes directly to my identity, uh, my uh, values, um, my aspirations. Joseph Macadal Champagne, um, first and foremost, is a child of God um, who is striving to do the will uh, of God so that I can reflect uh, his characteristics uh, not only from a standpoint of uh, physics but also metaphysics by that I mean to strive to be uh, and act uh, like the God who is responsible for my existence. Um, from a national standpoint, I was born and raised uh, in the beautiful land that is uh, known to many uh, as Haiti. And um, I am uh, essentially uh, Haitian, uh, of Haitian descent which I'm very proud uh, to be for many reasons, which we will explore later on. Um, I came in the United States at the age of 19 years old, and I um, you know, did uh, my schooling, uh, particularly in high school, um, for two years. And then uh, I, you know, I graduated as a uh, valedictorian of uh, that particular school, Sarah J. Hill High School uh, in, in Brooklyn, New York. And then I eventually got a scholarship to uh, go to Columbia University. And um, from there, I, uh, I studied free medicine uh, and I switched uh, down the line uh, to law. And then I went to um, uh, Georgetown University uh, School of Law uh, to, 
to study um, uh, pre-law because I did not want to just break away from uh, the studies of uh, pre-medicine and go directly into law. I wanted to have a feel for law uh, before I made uh, that uh, transition. Your, what was your childhood like? Um, I mean, growing up in <clears throat> Haiti, uh, being coming into the States in, at the age of 19, that aspirations of, uh, you know, I, I know you just mentioned that the aspiration was to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what led to all of this as growing up uh, in, in Haiti? What was the childhood like? Um, growing up in Haiti was a very interesting time for me because, uh, as I indicated, I spent 19 years uh, in, mm -hmm. in Haiti. I was born and raised in Haiti and at the age of 19, that's when I moved to the United States. So during those 19 <clears throat> years, um, I had this profound love uh, for Haiti. I always thought of Haitians as being somebody or someone uh, special, some group of people who are special in the sense that they were chosen um, by the God uh, of this universe uh, to do the impossible um, because the impossible was <clears throat> to extricate these uh, people from slavery not only for the benefit of themselves but also those who were in similar situations uh, throughout the Caribbean and even uh, in the Western world. And so for Haiti to have been able to, or the Haitians or the Africans who became Haitians to have been able to accomplish such fit, I was so proud to be part of this, this the nation of people. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I remember uh, uh, growing up, uh, I used to, um, you know, some of my friends in, in the neighborhood who did not have uh, money or did not have uh, food, um, I would, you know, go home and and get, you know, some food and uh, and, and and give it to them. Um, I'm talking about, you know, the you know, friends in, in the neighborhood in where I, I used to live in Avenue Macron Bois. Mm -hmm. um, and then that that I, I will always reflect on that and i remember um <laughs> when the people would pass by in front of my house you know i was probably around the age of uh, seven eight uh, uh nine years old uh i would uh, speak to them <laughs> as if I, I know they were not listening to me but i would speak to them trying to tell them you know how much I, I love them and things like that uh, as if I'm giving a speech you know the people are passing by you know uh, <laughs> doing, doing their their shows and um, going at the market and, and here you're I, giving a speech yeah <laughs> 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 and, 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 <laughs> and you know I'm, I'm gonna get into that because now I see where this all started <clears throat> you've been a public servant for a very long time now Yes, fighting sir. for the cause of the people, human rights, education, uh, immigration. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to become a public servant, uh, to, you know, go into politics? Well, <clears throat> what inspires me really is, is, uh, it's my upbringing. Like, um, I, I've always been a very sensitive person to people's pain. Um, that's that uh, as i indicated earlier you know the notion of seeing friends of mine who are in need uh uh where i would you know go out of my way and and give them food and give them money and um uh the, 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 this translated in many different uh aspects of my upbringing you know um what we for instance, when I went to high school, Sarah J. Hill High School in the United States, I find myself um, chosen by my uh, Haitian classmates to be 
their president um, for that Haitian club. And they gravitated toward me naturally because of the fact that I uh, uh, was an advocate uh, for them. And then I exhibited leadership uh, uh, to them. And of course, aside from the fact that I became the valedictorian of the school, um, uh, in terms of extracurricular activities, you know, uh, speaking on their behalf, you know, they, they saw fit that they would uh, choose me for, for uh, as their leader. And then fast forward into college, when I went to Columbia University, um, I find myself creating an uh, organization. Uh, this uh, particular organization was called uh, uh, Black Student uh, Leadership Collective and that organization was there to uh, sort of uh, give the black students uh, at Columbia University um, a, uh, um, an environment where they can be themselves and they can uh, learn about their, their, their culture, their history, and then of, or a way or place where they can get uh, a recharge, um, so to speak, so that they can go back and, and, and face the challenges uh, that presented to them. And then uh, fast forward into law school, I attended Vermont Law School. There, uh, I created another organization called Vermont Law School Student Leadership Collective uh, for Human Rights, even though there were only eight black students in the whole school. And in my class, there was only uh, about six black students. Um, we uh, created that organization, which was the first uh, organization uh, in the history of that school <laughs> that was established <laughs> by a, a, a black student. Um, and then so, and, 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 and we characterized it as a human rights organization. And we were able to do uh, very, to have a very strong impact uh, on the campus, and that organization still in existence at Vermont Today. Law School to, to this day, and that was wow, back in okay. 2002, 2002. So, and you know, we're gonna go into becoming uh, the first Haitian American elected official in the history of the state of New Jersey, and so on and so forth. So, but the spirit, that spirit from a childhood. That's what has translated into those different titles and whatnot. But essentially, right. it's the same spirit, just having different uh, uh, titles or uh, mm -hmm. accolade um, to define it. Uh, you, were the, you, you were the first mayor of African descent and the first Haitian to become mayor <clears throat> in uh, uh, New Jersey. Being a black man in America, Joseph, with mm -hmm. all its racism and Black <clears throat> Lives Matters, what were some of the difficulties that you encountered along the way, if any? Yes, um, I, I was the first uh, black mayor in the history of uh, Ocean County, New Jersey. Certainly, New Jersey is replete with many uh, African-American uh, mayors and uh, elected officials. But as far as the county, Ocean County, New Jersey. You were uh, the first. I was the first uh, yes. black mayor and the first uh, Haitian American um, mayor in the history of the state of New Jersey and the first um, Muslim mayor, if you want, if you will, in the history of the county uh, of New, New Jersey, of Ocean County, New Jersey. So <clears throat> I, I have um, encountered uh, much um, what you will call uh, racism, but it has it, it was not as blatant uh, uh, because the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan teaches us that um, um, a cue to racism is excellence. Um, if you strive to be uh, excellent in your field, if you strive to maintain moral excellence, uh, uh, intellectual excellence, and it, it will be very hard for uh, a racist uh, to exhibit their uh, racism uh, toward 
your excellence because uh, of the fact that they you are putting yourself in a position where you are needed and uh, it will be foolish uh, on the part of someone who no matter what their race is who would need uh, the services of um, that a person who may be uh, black or or, or non um, person who have a different ethnicity um, to manifest your racism toward that person and so mm -hmm. I uh, in the county I, I was uh, the first uh, black male law clerk in the history of that county uh, I clerk for a judge uh, called Judge Wendell E. Daniels, um, and who himself was the first black judge in the history of the county um, back in 2002. And then uh, the as far as the racism that I have uh, seen was really from those who <laughs> did not expect for me to to take a strong line uh because i wouldn't even call it racism i think it, that's the nature of, of, of politics uh you may be in a position of power but there are others who believe that uh because they are the the chair of the party um that they can necessarily control you um, as being a, a mayor or council council person or or, or senator or, or whatnot, mm -hmm. and so when you want to exert your position uh, and exert the leadership that is called upon by that position, then you run into conflict with the with those who uh the chair of the party or who may be the financier um and so i've encountered you know this type of uh, uh pushback uh because um i uh was determined to do what's right for my constituency and right. um that that did not sit well with uh, certain people with those individuals exactly <laughs> and so you know that caused me to come face to face with the nature of, of, of politics um yeah and so you know uh, without getting into too much details that's that's where I, i'll just leave it <clears throat> joseph how did you become a member of uh, the nation of islam to now being the representative of the nation of islam in it how did yeah. that happen well it it it, it really happened because of this spirit uh, out of which, you know, I, 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 I was always being inquisitive uh, uh, about m the reason why, you know, we as a people have been going through so much uh, trials and tribulations. Uh, growing up in Haiti, I was uh, always curious i used to ask a lot of questions and of course questions that were perplexed that members of my family or those around me uh really could not uh, uh answer um, most of them i would say could not answer and you know um when i, I came in the united states in 1991 uh I, those questions uh drove me to uh, uh in, inquire more about what is happening you know what is going on with our, our race you know why is it that we are constantly in a state of being oppressed uh i wanted to uh, i wanted to question god about those um conditions uh that were really abject uh were black people are concerned and so <clears throat> i started listening to dr king dr king was the very first uh, uh african-american 
a black leader that I uh, fell in love with and to the point where I memorized some of his speeches, um, even though I did not fully uh, uh, understand uh, the depth of what he was saying. But I, I just love his melodious voice and his, his, his um, daredevil uh, 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 stand uh, in the face of injustice. Right. And one time, I remember um, going uh, to work with my father uh, from New York to New Jersey. We were in, in a bus um, and in, in that bus, the, 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 uh, uh, this driver was playing uh, a message. And in, in that message, I heard the voice of this very powerful speaker who uh, was speaking with so much fervent, uh, uh, so much strength and, and, and determination. And as he was speaking, he mentioned the name uh, Dr. King. You know, he was saying how, when did Dr. King have a dream and when did he wake up to reality? And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I said, that was, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I said pretty powerful. Yes, I said, who's this man talking about <laughs> my man? Mm -hmm. You know, and then not realizing that mm -hmm. this man was gonna become my Your leader man. and teacher. Yeah, my yeah. my 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 man. Um, and so I asked the driver, who, you know, who's this man? You know, um, and they say, oh, that's the Honorable Mister Louis Farrakhan. And I say, the next question I ask, is he alive? You know, and then they said yes. And then I asked him the third question, where can I find uh, his uh, lectures? And it gave me the direction. And from that point, um, my life really has taken a trajectory uh, that has led me to, to this point. And to answer your question, as far as the, being a representative, I remember back in when I officially joined uh, after the Million Men March, which I attended, yes, I was one in the million, which was nearly two million black men who uh, answered the call of the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, and the majority of whom were uh, Christian, uh, which is a very interesting dynamic, you know, that um, the majority of those black men who were present were Christian, yet the call, the, uh, the caller, uh, of that march uh, is known as being a Muslim. So right. that shows the universality of his message uh, that goes across religion um, because it focuses on freedom, justice, and equality. And so um, in 1996, when I became an official member of the Nation of Islam while a student at Columbia University, um, I used to pray uh, to, to God who is known in the Arabic language as Allah. Many people think that, oh, <laughs> Allah is just a different God. Uh, no, it's not a different God. It's a different language uh, used to call upon God. Mm -hmm. So Christians who are in Egypt, um, uh, in, in Arabic speaking language, um, they do not uh, use any other word but the word Allah in Allah. reference to God, to God in the Christian church. Right. So it's an interesting, you know, thing to 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 highlight. Just like you know, uh, the Chinese in their language has a name for for God, and just because they use that name, that does not mean you. It's a different God. Um, so in the, in the Spanish, the same, they call it Dios. So somebody who does not understanding the dynamics in language, um, would say, Oh, I don't believe in Dios. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but, it's the same person <laughs> that they're talking about. Exactly. So when I say Allah, I'm talking about God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So, so I used to pray to, to Allah, God that you know whoever 
uh, is going to uh, uh, bring that message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as exemplified by the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan to the Haitian people, uh, you know, I, I, I want to find that person and support that person, you know, um, and that used to be my prayer and not realizing that God was going to put me in the position where I would be that person uh, from 1996, I was the first one uh, just to be on the safe side. Let me just say I was one of the first uh, to uh, start to uh, promote um, the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Islam in general uh, to Haiti. We had okay. a, a videotape, um, a me message that uh, we did with Brother uh, Student Minister Diogenes Enrique Mohammed, uh, who's also known as Mohammed Abdullah Mohammed, who is of Dominican descent, who was uh, a, a teacher and a mentor of mine in the Nation of Islam, which is a very interesting. Uh, uh, and he's a Dominican. Yes, he's Dominican Republic. Uh, we call Haitian. Um, so I used to study the Haitian history uh, with him. Um, and then in Islam, and we did this video uh, or lecture uh, entitled The Need for Islam in the Haitian Community. And the word Islam means peace. So in other words, the need for peace, peace. Right. in the Haitian community. And that message was uh, broadcast in many uh, uh, television uh, stations uh, in New York um, and also I should say different television program in New York and also uh, the tape was circulated in various circles uh, in Haiti and that from my understanding had started a, a movement uh, in Haiti actually I would say 2011 um, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan decided to go to Haiti and I was uh, his interpreter um, and of course Wycliffe was there as well, and Wycliffe was instrumental in bringing the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan to Haiti, and I was just there as he, uh, the minister's interpreter. So what is your and my responsibility in an hour like this? Qui responsabilité pas moi avec Paul, non autant qu'on ça? Haïti Thomas! Haïti Thomas! This is your land. Ça c'est ton lieu. Everything under this land is your rightful possession. Tout bagage là bas terre c'est possession pour lui. And we uh, met with different. Uh, and that uh, was his first time in Haiti. Precisely, that was his first time in Haiti. So that was precisely on de December 11 to the December 15 of 2000. 11. Incidentally, we are celebrating the 10th year anniversary of the Honorable Minister Louis Far Farrakhan's visit uh, to, Haiti. to Haiti Yeah. Uh, this December uh, in the four corners of, of Haiti, uh, be it in Plaisance du Nord, in uh, uh, Port-de-Paix, uh, in Jacques Merle, in okay. Port-au-Prince, and in Jeremy. From there in 2015, uh, I was... Uh, um giving the position officially um as being a representative of the honorable mr louis farrakhan this was in 2015 yes sir july 2015 okay. yes okay. and then at that time a few few months later uh on october 15 uh god blessed me to uh speak uh, at the Million Men March, uh, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Million Men March, which I attended 20 years ago uh, for that, that time, to uh, be one of the speakers where I address uh, nearly 1 million people uh, on the Mall of Washington, D.C., uh, as a, a representative of the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan to Haiti. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I would like to greet each and every one of you with a greeting word of peace of assalamu alaikum la paix avec nous la paix con ustedes i am here with my brothers 
ancestors from Haiti and Dominican Republic. We want to show to the world that we are not going to be allowed to be divided. Not anymore. Because the division of our people is to the benefit of the enemy. And the unity of our people is to our benefit. But question for you, Joseph. Uh, being a religious organization, the Nation of, of, of Islam, has the Nation of Islam ever reached out to the government of Haiti uh, for land to be developed, create schools, hospitals, just like any other religions that are there? Have they yeah. ever done that? The uh, interesting thing is the Nation of Islam is not just like any other religion. Uh, as you know, the Nation of Islam has had uh, some serious uh, oppositions uh, in the United States. And of course, uh, United States of America being uh, such a powerful uh, uh, broker uh, in the affairs of Haiti, uh, any uh, attempt uh, of that sort uh, would not necessarily be uh, successful. Okay. Uh, but nevertheless, the nation of Islam, uh, particularly, particularly the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, had uh, sent uh, a delegation which I headed uh, along with uh, student minister Patrick uh, Mohammed, who is of Haitian descent and who is the uh, representative of the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan uh, to the whole uh, seventh region uh, uh, of the nation of Islam. The seven region comprises of the of Florida um, and uh, the Caribbean uh, nations um, in the Caribbean. So, but a, which also covers Haiti. Uh, so, but a Patrick, a student minister, Patrick Mohammed, uh, is uh, the, uh, you could say, uh, after myself comes to the Minister Patrick uh, Mohammed as my superior and mm -hmm. uh, and above student Minister Patrick uh, Mohammed. And he's also Haitian, Patrick. He's also Haitian, yes. Mohammed. Yeah. Yes. And uh, after him comes the Honorable Mr. Louis Fark. And so I report to him, I work with him uh, uh, to, with matters dealing with, with Haiti uh, mm -hmm. in particular. And just want to make it very quick. Um, the day that the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan uh, gave me uh, that assignment he uh, as being his representative to Haiti, he also gave that assignment to another brother by the name of Vladimir X, who uh, is of Dominican descent, and he made him uh, his represent representative to Dominican Republic. Uh, so... So essentially, we were at that time um, both given that uh, uh, mission, um, and we both spoke at the 20th anniversary of the Million Men March uh, on the same platform where I spoke right. first, and then he uh, followed uh, right after because I was the one to introduce him after mm -hmm. I gave my lecture. The minister wanted to show um, and promote uh that unity between those two peoples mm -hmm. the dominicans and the haitians and the haitians as one people but certainly uh one people who have been def divided by two different uh slave masters uh the fr french and the spaniards and the spanish and Correct. that and uh, that never got along with each other so naturally they pass on their hatred onto their slaves um that to this date we have this dissension uh, between Dominicans and Haitians, but the source of it uh, is coming from the dissension existing uh, that existed between uh, the, the French uh, colonists and the Spanish uh, colonists. Mm -hmm. You were one of the first groups uh, to arrive in Del Rio uh, recently to help our brothers and sisters. What were your thoughts when you saw the pictures of the Rangers on horses running? after uh, the Haitians? Yes, sir. It, we, we arrived there on uh, the 19th of September 
uh, following a conference uh, we had with the White House uh, where we spoke with the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, Mr. Mayokas, um, and we didn't notice uh, the severity of the situation until we went underground uh, the following day um, on Sunday, the 19th. And to go to Texas and go to to see the condition that our brothers and sisters were um, was it tugged at my heart. It was um, such a demeaning uh, situation uh, for our people to be in. I constantly uh, was reflecting on the greatness of our history, our great contribution to uh, the world um, in ending the trajectory of slavery that the world, um, you know, the uh, Caucasian world was uh, heading, uh, you know, with the institution called slavery. And thinking, reflecting on uh, the Emperor Jean-Jacques de Saline, his uh, sacrifice um, in establishing that empire, which was short-lived uh, by his assassination in 1806, mm -hmm. I started to reflect on the 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 the, the sacrifice of our uh, brothers and sisters, particularly Shamal Peralt, in trying to uh, uphold the dignity uh, of the Haitian men and, wo and women, and uh, and to see those people are the descendants of such greatness, and they are forced pretty much to uh, leave the land that their ancestors fought so hard uh, to provide them um, and to see that that was uh, uh, absolutely hurtful because I do know and understand that if those people had um, leaders uh, that were not puppets of mm -hmm. the American uh, government and the uh, Canadian government or French government, if they were not puppets uh, and if they understood the value of those uh, uh, nationals, of those Haitians, those Haitians, 15,000 Haitians under the bridge would not have been found there. They would have remained in their country and enjoyed the benefit uh, uh, of good governance. Uh, so, 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 so that gave me, you know, a, a lot uh, to think on, and and sincerely, um, we 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 have to stop that trend uh, because it is uh, a, a, it is a lot to ask for a nation to keep on absorbing uh, uh, foreign nationals even though the law of the United States uh, does allow individuals to come into their borders to seek mm -hmm. asylum. Now, we have to make this very clear. It is not illegal to seek asylum at the border of the United States. However, it is illegal to try to enter uh, without really having uh, a justification to request for asylum. Um, and so, and at the same time, I want to say this, um, it, you know, um, the United States of America has contributed tremendously uh, to that flow of migrants, uh, would even say refugees, uh, coming into their borders, particularly those Haitians, because they have been meddling with our affairs for so many years. Uh, first of all, they didn't, they never recognized the independence of Haiti uh, for 58 years from uh, 1804 to 1862. And when they did recognize it, you know, uh, a few decades later in 1915, they decided to uh, invade Haiti and occupy it for uh, 19 years and establishing a 
uh, an army that was under their control uh, and fast forward all the way to uh, you know the the destruction of our uh, natural resources particularly our rice production and other production so that uh, the United States can uh, dump their rice into uh, our market um, the control uh, of our leaders and of course we cannot absolve our leaders of uh, responsibility because they also are complicit in mm -hmm. the destruction they have of, their faults as well their faults as well in in the destruction of haiti and um but the point is uh the united states of america uh, particularly I'm referring to the government of America has used their power uh, to help destabilize that beautiful country and at some Correct. point they will not have to stop. Correct. The, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, teaches that uh, love is the creative energy out of which God created the universe and also that love means freedom, justice and equality which you have stated earlier. Within the international community, Joseph, and I'm speaking of US, France, Canada, even our own brothers and uh, our brothers next door, the Dominican Republic, uh, who calls themselves our friends, our friends of Haiti. Do you see that this type of love that the minister preaches uh, from Haiti's uh, so-called friends of Haiti? Hmm. That's a very profound question. Uh, we have to go at the operative uh, term, friend. Uh, in uh, international law, uh, from a geopolitical standpoint, we do not uh, use uh, the term friends. Um, the, the, the word friend uh, really does not have its place there uh, because nations do not have friends they have uh interest they have special interest um and any nation um that uses uh the term friend to relate to uh another nation uh either is being hypocritical or is saying that this is an extension of its own uh, uh policy and its own government um, and it's either one of those two. I can say that Israel is certainly, uh, United States is a friend of Israel. Um, you, and because it, when you look at the um, level of influence that uh, the Jewish community has um, in the United States, you know, um, they have that uh, uh, power uh, to uh, guide the policy objective of the United States of America favorably to their country. And so Correct. that in that context, we could use the term friend. But when we are looking at the relationship between Haiti and the United States, for instance, we cannot rightfully use the term friend because friendship because um, a friend will never try to undermine the sovereignty of another friend from an, uh, the standpoint of geopolitics. Um, a friend would not want to turn into a sovereign state into a vassal, V-A-S-S-A-L state. Um, and so that's exactly what we see happening uh, with Haiti. Uh, there's a veneer of friendship, but it is not friendship. To me, it is, uh, they are, Haiti has been treated as, uh, as a foe, uh, as a, um, a reject in a sense, because of the fact that the policy uh, objectives of, of, of America uh, is to pretend to help Haiti, but not necessarily 
to be and act in the best interest of Haiti. They are mm -hmm. acting in the best interest of the United States. The United but, States. But not necessarily in the best interest of, of, of Haiti. Because if that were the case, uh, just look at you know the history. There were only two nations that were independent in the Western Hemisphere for a long time, the United States and, and Haiti. And Haiti. You know, Sorry. if the United States uh, mm -hmm. were a friend to Haiti, uh, first of all, the United States would have uh, uh, recognized uh, Haiti from the the day, January 1st, 1804, that the Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines had declared that country, uh, that empire independent. Mm -hmm. uh, when, but we didn't see that. We saw a constant undermining in rejection uh, to recognize uh, the sovereignty of that nation ex exhibits the intent and the state of mind of America, not only vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Haiti, but also vis-a-vis -vis the ideals of uh, democracy, the true, because mm -hmm. understand that democracy is supposed to be the rule of the people. Um, what is more democratic for a, a group of people who were in slavery, who decided to uh, free themselves and establish a nation of their own? That's a, that you would call this a democratic act because the people decided and agreed to make a decision uh, as to what direction that they want to take with their lives, which was to establish themselves as, as, as an entity sovereign and, and, and equal uh, in the Western Hemisphere or anywhere in the world. But America did not recognize that uh, democratic act or that act of independence and liberty on the part of those black people. And more importantly, uh, this was a statement against slavery. So if, right. um, if America did not uh, uh, recognize Haiti, which uh, was the empire of liberty, uh, then what does that say about the true nature uh, of the government of the United States uh, as it relates to freedom, justice, and equality, as it relates to uh, the, 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 the notion of, of, of democracy where black people are concerned. So that's why I uh, definitely do not believe that United States of America has demonstrated that uh, she is a true uh, friend or even a friend uh, mm -hmm. to Haiti. Action speaks louder than word. As you stated, the word love uh, means freedom, justice, and equality. In essence, love is not a noun. It is a verb. You, if you love someone, you gotta give them justice. If you love someone, you gotta uh, give them uh, equal opportunity. Uh, if you love someone, you gotta uh, educate them so that they can be free to exercise their best interests. Yeah. There's also a tense situation happening right now, uh, you would say, between the Dominican uh, government and Haiti, uh, especially on the border, and uh, the president of the DR, Dominican Republic, Louis Abinader, had threatened to remove visas for the Haitian students uh, just recently. And mm -hmm. he has also closed the markets on the border, mm -hmm. stopped all planes from coming in, out, coming in and going out to Haiti. Uh, the denationalizing of Haitians that were born in the DR. Uh, there's a slew of issues, Joseph. What do you make of this situation between the two countries? Uh, it, well, let, let's start with the first um, issue. Um, President Abinabe, he is taking a position really that is completely uh, unjust. That goes without saying. Remember how this whole, whole thing started. It was the United States of America that made a statement uh, relative to the insecurity, uh, the level of insecurity that exists in Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And so 
the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Uh, Claude Joseph, Claude Joseph, he made a statement consistent with what the US the United of America stated in Correct. relationship to the insecurity existing, the level of insecurity existing in Dominican Republic. And what Mr. Claude Joseph said was only right. Uh, we are uh, two nations on the same island. If the United States of America is recognizing there is a level of insecurity that has reached a point where the United States of America was justified to bring that to the attention of Dominican Republic and the world, mm -hmm. then uh, any responsible leader would take a stand, you know, from Haiti, um, would take a stand and say, look, um, we are on the same island, we share the same uh, border, um, let us do what we can to uh, decrease this level of insecurity uh, for the benefit of both nations. So why is it that the president of Dominican Republic uh, did not express discontent uh, toward uh, the government of the United States for making uh, this statement? But why is it that the president of Dominican Republic <laughs> find it soon as, soon as Claude Joseph went and said what he said, he just jumped. Is this jump, jump at Claude Joseph? Yes. Uh, so that shows uh, a, a sense of uh, imbalance in the mind of the president of Dominican Republic. Why, you know, to, to, to be so selective in your outrage. If you are mm -hmm. outraged, that outrage should be uh, 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 brought was the US. to the U.S. Because the Correct. U.S. was the one who initiated that statement. We didn't initiate that statement. And when I say we, I'm referring to Haiti. Haiti, yes. So to uh, try to sanction the Haitian government by first trying to, uh, 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 you know, affect those uh, students who are seeking visas uh, in Dominican Republic as a way to punish uh, uh, Haiti and, 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 and indirectly uh, uh, Mr. Claude Joseph is very childish um, and, and clearly uh, unacceptable. Uh, what do you think, Joseph, of, of, of the situation in Haiti right now? Um, gangs, control, um, gas shortage, uh, <laughs> jobs. You have a young, uh, a youth generation that is less than 25 years old, 60%. And with all of this going on in Haiti, what is your take on this? What do you think of this government that is there? Well, first of all, the question is, do we have a government a government well i, I <laughs> wanted you to say that but <laughs> yes. I, i'm only asking the question yes sir because mm -hmm. it, 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 the government will have to be recognized by the constitution what is a government without a constitution and what is a constitution without a government um we uh according to constitution of haiti uh, the Constitution recognizes a government that is composed of a president, uh, a prime minister, and so on and so forth, uh, you know, a parliament and whatnot. We don't have uh, a president in Haiti. Uh, we do not have a parliament in Haiti. So, therefore, by definition, based on the Constitution of 1987, which was amended in uh, 2012, uh, we do not have uh, a government in Haiti uh, currently. Mm -hmm. We may have um, a, uh, a cadre of, of, of officials 
who are attempting uh, to um, represent the affairs of the Haitian people. And because of the fact that they are recognized by uh, other nations, particularly the United States of America, they are acting as uh, a government for the purpose of developing uh, relations with other nations. But from a, a legitimate standpoint where the constitution of Haiti is concerned, we really do not have one. And so that has created uh, a vacuum uh, in the control of the affairs uh, of, of Haiti that has created a vacuum in dealing uh, with the issue of justice in Haiti. Essentially, we do not have justice in Haiti. Uh, the, the, the proof is very clear. So many people have been killed uh, uh, and there has not been any repercussion you know, mm -hmm. journalists, uh, uh, common people. Um, we have, you know, met Dorval, um, uh, and, and it, recently, um, we had the, the president of Haiti himself, yeah. uh, all those murders, uh, assassinations, and yet there has not been any, uh, justice, uh, justice, uh, yeah. done to 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 rectify this the, the this the, these issues to me this is done by design nothing happens uh in haiti just by happenstance yeah. you know it just happened to be this way no haiti um, has been on the verge of getting to that point and unfortunately it's gonna get worse as the honorable minister louis farrakhan has taught us because the enemy of Haiti uh, wants to make the point that Haiti is is not fit uh, to not only rule itself, but also not fit to even be recognized as uh, an empire of, of freedom, justice, and equality in 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 the in the world, uh, as our ancestors uh, uh, has strove uh to to do and so the idea is to continue to undermine uh the 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 the, the, the will of the haitian people meanwhile there's an interesting phenomenon going on in the united states and other places in the world where we have uh, people of haitian descent who are uh you know in position of uh political leadership uh, that are doing uh, tremendously well uh, in terms of, uh, you know, managing uh, budgets uh, uh, of millions of dollars um, in the United States who are mayors, who are uh, uh, Congress uh, persons and who are, in, you know, school board members who are in different positions uh, in the United States who are helping the United States to run their country Growing up in Haiti, Joseph, what would you say that you'd learn that you had learned as a young boy that has helped you to be the man that you are today? Growing up in Haiti, uh, I was raised by my uh, grandparents, particularly my grandfather, um, who uh, was a disciplinarian um, and who instilled in me uh, the love for education. Uh, he used to have me uh, uh, sat right next to him um, and 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 uh, and tell me uh, which means you know uh, hold on to your books um, and study and and he would say and um, I want you to become you know somebody consequential in the future and so he was very hard on me like that. And the second person who influenced me much was, uh, and to some extent is uh, my older sister, uh, Madeleine Auguste, uh, who is currently uh, a, a anesthesiologist, uh, a medical doctor in Buffalo, New York. Um, she 
uh, was very strong uh, with you know uh, education. He uh, would uh, always encourage me to learn above the next grade. You know, um, when it wasn't even a time for me to start learning uh, Latin, he used to push it on us uh, at home and in Spanish and math. Um, so uh, growing up uh, in that environment, it gave me a love for education uh, and also in a sense of discipline to put uh, my mind to something that uh, I want to accomplish and, and, and give me the stamina uh, to do so. Well, Joseph Makadar Champagne, it was a pleasure and an honor, sir, to have you uh, here with us today as my guest on Tele Lakai. Um, the future is bright, and I'm sure that uh, we'll see you again soon. Uh, there's a lot more coming from you. And by the way, when would be the next trip for uh, the minister uh, in Haiti or to Haiti? That. Uh, I'm not very sure about that. Uh, it's, it's all in the hand of God. Uh, the minister is currently 88 years old. Uh, although when you look at him, he looks like he is in uh, early 60s. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, incidentally, and in good health, right? And is a very in good, very good health. Um, right. And incidentally, this is coming from the the dietary law that he has introduced. Uh, to us about, you know, eating one meal a day. Some of us eat once every two days, uh, like I do. Um, okay. So I don't know uh, what God has in store for him as far as uh, deciding to go to Haiti. But he always said to me, uh, which I have asked him once uh, that same question. He said to me that uh, when I go to Haiti, that's him going to Haiti. Uh, so you know, because that's the dynamic of representing uh, an individual uh, to be able to represent uh, his uh, teachings and uh, carry out his message. So essentially is the person being there because the person is being there through his instructions and through his messages. Okay. Yes. Well, again, Joseph, it was a pleasure and an honor to have you here with us. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. The pleasure was mine and my best to you and your family. Thank you. Once again, we hope that you have enjoyed our show this evening. I would also like to thank Mr. Joseph Makandar Champagne for being my guest tonight on Tele Lakai. Before we leave you, I would like to remind all of our viewers that the purpose of Tele Lakai is to showcase the work that we as Haitians are doing throughout the world. Our talents, our culture, our professions, and our history. And to also show to our beloved country Haiti the professionals that we have and who we are in the diaspora. So please, if you know someone who deserves to be recognized and that you would like to suggest to us for an interview, you may contact us at www.lakai at lakaienterprise.com or you can go and visit our website at www.lakaienterprise.com. We hope to see you again next week and please do tell a friend and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thank you and good night. Mm -hmm.